I want to introduce the concept of work. Suppose we have a mass m and we have a force f acting on this mass and the mass undergoes a displacement d and we'll say that the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector is phi. Then the work is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle phi. So just to be clear here, that w here, that's the work. The f here is a constant force. We're going to assume for now that our force is constant. Later on we'll uh, worry about what happens when the force is not constant. d is the magnitude of the displacement, and phi is the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector when they're placed so their tails coincide. So this definition applies to the work done by a constant force only. Later on we'll worry about a non-constant force, but for now assume the force is constant. The units of work are the joule. So we can write a joule in SI units. We know that a joule in this case is going to be, well, F is newtons and D is meters, so that would be a newton times a meter. And the cosine of phi is unitless, so we don't need to worry about that. What's a newton? Well, that's uh, a unit of force, and force is mass times acceleration. Mass is kilograms, and acceleration is meters per second squared. And then we still have our meters from our d here, uh, this meters here. And so when you combine all this, you get kilograms times meters squared per second squared, and you can see why we prefer to just call that a joule, then you don't have to write all this out every time. Work is a scalar quantity, not a vector quantity. That means that it has a magnitude, which could be a positive number or a negative number or a zero, but it does not have a direction because it's a scalar quantity, not a vector quantity. Vector quantities would have a direction attached to them as well as a magnitude. And work may be positive, negative, or zero. Let's look at a specific example. Suppose that we have a box of mass m, and we're going to push on this box with force f. And we have a surface, and there is friction. We'll say that the coefficient of friction is mu. And we're going to push this box a distance d. So in this case, we're going to say the box is moving with a constant velocity. And let's look at a free body diagram for the box. So the box here is represented by the dot at the center of our diagram here. And what forces are acting on the box? OK, well, we have the applied force. That's this force right here. I'm going to call that the applied force. Then we have the normal force. That's because we have a surface. We have its weight. And we have the force of friction, which opposes the direction of motion. The box is moving this way, so the force of friction is going the other way. And now we can do some of the forces in the x. We have F sub A, the applied force, minus F sub F, the friction force. And since the box is moving with a constant velocity, this is equal to zero. The box is not accelerating. Then we have the sum of the forces in the y. That'd be the normal force minus the weight. And that also equals zero. So let's calculate the work done by the applied force on the box. Notice how we write this. We always say that work is done by something, by some force. And we say that it's done on something, in this case, on the box. And we can calculate the work done by each of these specific forces here. So in this case, this is going to be the work done by the applied force. So I'm going to give it a subscript A for applied. So in this case, since we're talking about the work done by the applied, we're going to use a little A. And then we plug in F sub A into the formula for work up here, since we're talking about the applied force. And then D is still the magnitude of the displacement. And we still have the cosine of phi. What is phi? Well, it's the angle between the force we're talking about, which in this case is the applied force and the displacement vector. Well, here's the applied force, and here's the displacement vector. They lie right on top of each other, so the angle in this case is zero degrees. So I can rewrite this as the applied force times the displacement times the cosine of zero degrees. What is the cosine of zero? Well, that's just one. So this is just the applied force times the displacement. Okay. So we have the work done by the applied force. What about the work done by the normal force? 
Well, we can use the same formula, except now I'm going to put a subscript n on here because we're talking about the normal force, and I'm going to use f sub n for the normal force. Everything else is the same. And we need to figure out the angle. That's usually the hardest part of calculating the work, is figuring out what the angle is going to be. So here's the normal force that's going straight up, and here's the displacement. The angle here is 90 degrees. So in this case, I'm talking about this angle right here that's 90 degrees. So in this case, we have the cosine of 90, but the cosine of 90 is zero. So this is zero. In other words, the normal force does no work. Okay, so now we did the normal force. How about the weight? The work done by the weight on the box. Okay, I'm going to use a subscript G to represent the, the work done by the weight. And so that's going to be the weight times D times the cosine of phi. The weight goes straight down. The displacement goes to the right. The angle again is 90 degrees. And again, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So the weight does no work on the box. Okay, so you'll notice that when the force is perpendicular to the displacement, that force does no work on the object. What about the force of friction? So the work done by force of friction, I'm going to use a subscript F for friction, and then we have the force of friction times D times the cosine of phi. Force of friction points to the left, the displacement points to the right. This time the angle is 180 degrees, it's a straight line. And so the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1, and this is going to be negative force of friction times displacement. But if we remember the formula for force of friction, that's mu times the normal force. And if you look at the sum of the forces in the y direction up here, we see that the normal force is going to be equal to the weight. And so that's going to be minus mu mgd, because the weight is mg. Okay, so we have our four works here. Now let's look at the net work. Net means you take the sum of all the works. So in this case, the net work is going to be the work done by the applied force, plus the work done by the normal force, plus the work done by the weight, plus the work done by the friction force. The work done by the applied force, that's the applied force times D, and these middle two are zero, so we can ignore them. The work done by the friction force is minus mu mgd. But wait a second, the applied force by the sum of the forces in the x direction is the same thing as the friction force. And the friction force, well, that's mu times the normal force. And the normal force is the same thing as the weight. That's by this second equation here, sum of the forces in the y direction. And so that is mu mgd, but then we're subtracting mu mgd, and we get zero. The net work is zero. Now, this actually is not too much of a surprise. Uh, later on, we'll figure out why exactly that makes sense. But for now, just remember that when you're calculating the net work, you have to add up the work done by every single force acting on the object.